It's a green week chart. Uh, it's a green chart for the weekend, the 24th of October on the Apex Commodities Exchange. We have David Ukumadu, a strategy and corporate finance analyst with Apex, joining us from Abuja studio. Hi, David. Uh, good morning. Bring us up to date with the details of the trade. Um, good morning, Ine. Thank you for having me. So over the course of the trading week, we saw an increase in total turnover of about 48.78%, moving from 0.41 billion naira to close the week at 0.61 billion naira. While the total volume traded saw an increase of about 74.67%, moving from just over 1,237,000 contracts to close the week at just over 2,160,000 contracts. The number of deals saw an increase of, of about 49.83%, moving from 291 deals to close the week at 436 deals. While the ACI, which is the FX Commodities Index, so remained unchanged. The FX Export Index, however, saw an increase of about 0.94%, moving from 198.44 basis points to close the week at 200.30 basis points. Moving on to the volume of contracts traded on the exchange, we saw the price of maize rise from 3,535 contracts to close the week at 807,394 contracts. Soybeans also increased from 200,738 contracts to close the week at 529,729 contracts. Paddy rice saw an increase of about seven, moving from 781 contracts to close the week at 300,195 contracts. Sorghum, however, declined from 1,001,000 contracts, 710, to 519,467 contracts. Moving on to price changes for the week, we saw an increase in maize of about 0.73%, representing 1.52 naira, to close the week at 710 naira. While paddy rice saw an increase of about 5.56%, representing 15 naira, to close the week at 285 naira. Clean sorghum, however, saw a decline of about 1%, representing 2.91 naira to close the week at 288.05 naira. Soybean also saw a decline of about 4.30%, representing 16.66 naira to close the week at 371.15 naira. All other commodities remained unchanged. For more information on the commodities markets, you can always check out our website at if African Exchange and our social media handle at Comex by FX. All right, uh, David, uh, thank you so much. David Ukomadu is a strategy and corporate finance analyst with Apex. Thank you so much for giving us the details. Yeah, thank you. We're still uh, staying in Apex. Uh, Apex has invested in financial education initiatives to enhance financial literacy among investors and improve participation for retail and institutional investors in the commodities market. Since its inception, the exchange has executed several robust education campaigns to deepen the financial market knowledge and confidence of investors through digitally distributed learning materials data-driven market reports, webinars, and outreach programs which have driven up active participation in the commodities market. We have joining us here in the studio in Lagos, Stephanie Mills, uh, to give us uh, details of this and uh, how much impact uh, this has made. Stephanie Mills is the head COMEX retail financial market for FX. Hi, Stephanie. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Edie. Good to always have a, you. It was a pleasure to be here. Good to have you here. So uh, we see all the things you say you have done. <laughs> Tell us how impactful and how you've been able to achieve this since inception. Okay, yes. Um, financial literacy is very fundamental in ensuring that every investor is well informed and they're able to make um, informed decisions and create wealth. And to do this, three things must happen. Information needs to be timely, it needs to be reliable, and it needs to be accessible. So we at Apex have been able to do this through different initiatives. We've been able to collaborate with different stakeholders in the commodities market space, um, from like regulators to capital market operators, and even the, the investors themselves to ensure that um, we're able to bridge this gap. Um, we've been able to um, partner with the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers to be able to include commodities trading in their training models, and this has made it reliable and accessible.
Uh, we've also um, partnered with private and public universities to provide financial literacies to students. Um, and this is us saying you're not too young to start investing and understanding um, the investment landscape. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, we've also um, been able to reduce the barrier to entry. Um, last year, we were able to reduce our contract size from 100 kg to 1 kg per unit, meaning that um, you're able to invest with as little as 10,000 Naira. Um, no income bracket is excluded. And this is all saying that um, this is an inclusive market that everybody can play in. Mm. Yeah. I like the part about the university because uh, catching yeah. them young is, is very really important. important. Yes. Yeah, and that's where the future is. And talking about sustainable, sustaining this, uh, what about sustainable finance and the issue of de-risking the sector to attract more participation? So for to start with, investors need to know the risks that are inherent in um, the market. I'll touch on three main risks. Um, we have the price risk, which is associated with um, the loss of portfolio value. Um, and we've been able to mitigate this by providing um, timely market data through our um, daily and weekly price reports that we share on our platform and even here on channels. Um, we've also provided a price band that reduces that price volatility um, for investors. And then we have the commodities risk, which is associated with um, um, loss of um, commodities or damage of commodities. And we mitigated that by having a comprehensive um, insurance cover on our accredited warehouses. And lastly, we have the credit risk, which is um, a risk that can occur when um, an another party or any party in the contract um, doesn't fulfill their party. Um, their, their, um, their part. And we've been able to have um, a contract um, a contract that ensures that this is mitigated. We ensure that we collect, collect um, collateral of up to 1.2 times the amount that will be disbursed to fund seekers. So all of this has been done to ensure that the risks are, are reduced. And we have innovative products that suit different investors' risk appetites. Right? So your high-risk investor, we have, we have the spot market that gives you the um, high returns that they're looking for. For the medium um, investor, we have um, our fixed income investments that give you the guarantee on your um, return on investment at a um, specified period of time. And for medium to low risk investors, we have a um, fair exchange traded commodity, um, which um, over time has been able to be inflation proof and provide an hedge against um, um, exchange rates. Yes, um, I'm very sure that a lot of investors <laughs> that invested in our last one are very happy. The last one matured in September and did a 30.5%, which um, if you look at the present inflation rate, which is um, slightly above 20%. Yeah, 20.77. Exactly. So you're able to hedge against that, and that's a good way Inter to prepare for the recession coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't well, scare us. <laughs> well, it's good to be informed. This is the World Investors Week um, by the um, International Organization of Securities um, Commission, and it's a globally recognized week, um, which is aimed at financial um, literacy for investors, right? And the, the, the theme for this year is investors resilience and sustainable finance, and it couldn't have been more, um, the topic could have been perfect because of this present time that we are in with the macroeconomic um, factors that we're seeing, which will affect a lot of investors and um, portfolio value. So it's a very um, important to understand what is coming ahead so you can prepare. <laughs> prepare and hedge. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so all of this that you have uh, uh, listed, uh, that FX has been doing, what change has it brought to the landscape? the commodities landscape in Nigeria, in Africa. I know you guys also operate yeah. outside Nigeria. Yes. So over the past eight years, um, Apex has been primarily focused on helping Africa feed itself. And we've been able to do that by providing access to markets, to finance and infrastructure in the commodities values chain. We started up in, uh, in Nigeria. We've been able to expand to other um, African countries um, Kenya and now Uganda and more to come in the coming years. Um, we've been able to provide um, support to smallholder farmers by providing quality inputs um, and training to be able to increase their yield production. We've also been able to be their first point of um, identification by providing them bank verification and adding them to the Nigerian database. Um, for um, the investors, we've used the barrier to entry, provided them with support with um, brokers, broker dealers to provide that advisory um, for them as well. And for infrastructure, we've been able to um, have, a, we have the largest um, network of warehouses. We have about over 140 warehouses across 26 states. And this storage, this warehouses not just serve as storage facility, but also help to securitize the physical commodities that we can then list on the exchange. Are they open to, you know, smallholder farmers? Yes, so definitely. Which also provide access to a market for them so they're already off takers that ensures that um, 
the yield that they're able to produce are able to be sold off and then they can make money and increase their livelihoods, which is what we are very aimed at doing. And all our goals are closely aligned with the United Nations um, um, SDG goals. Yeah, well, uh, that's very important for us. Uh, food security is a major thing. Yeah. A, hu a hungry man cannot invest. At all. A hungry At man all. cannot <laughs> even stay in peace with yes. his neighbors. So we need to deal with that food security. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie thank Mill, you so much, for Amy. Head Comex Retail Finance Market uh, with Apex. Thank you. Thank you very much. For your enlightenment this morning. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Let's take a breather and then we'll be back.